Hello and welcome to the discourse. In the previous session, we discussed the literary feature of Anglo-Norman period. The Middle English literature can be classified in three parts: the matter of Britain, the matter of France, and the matter of Rome. Now let us discuss the matter of Britain. The very first poet who wrote extensively about matter of Britain was Geoffrey Monmouth. Geoffrey Monmouth was known for his immense work in British historiography. He wrote a work known as Historia Regum Britannia in which he discussed the lives and deeds of all the kings since 2000 years before his time. He wrote about all of them and discussed in details. In his book he starts with Brut of Troy who founded Britain and then he reaches to Anglo-Saxons and Anglo-Normans who established Britain as a strong nation. His book contains the earliest mention of King Lear and his daughters and the legend of King Arthur. All the other works which contains King Lear and King Arthur are been inspired by the work of Geoffrey Monmouth. Now he wrote his book Historia Regum Britannia in Latin language. So his work was in Latin language. The Latin language was the language of clergy. It was not the language of the noble persons, the rulers, and neither it was used by the common people of England at that time. The Latin language was the language of clergy, and he wrote this book Historia Regum Britannia in Latin language. Now, the second important poet of Anglo-Norman period was Wace. He wrote his book Roman de Brut in French, Old French language, which is also known as the Norman language. Now the normal language was the language of rulers and latin language was the language of clergy. Wace discusses the literary history of Britain in his work Roman de Brut. Now the third important poet who wrote about matter of Britain was Layman. L A Y A M O N. Layman wrote in English. Geoffrey Monmouth wrote in Latin which was the language of clergy. Wace wrote in Old French or the normal language which was the language of rulers and Layman wrote in English. Now English was the language of common people. Layman also wrote about the history of kings of Britain in past and he also wrote about the literary history of Britain. So what Layman did is he took the the essence of Geoffrey Monmouth's work and Wace's work and translated in English. The title of the Layman's work is proved Now this title is inspired by the brute of Troy who founded Britain. Layman also discusses King Lear and King Arthur in great details. So the first work on King Arthur and King Lear was that of Geoffrey Monmouth. He wrote in Latin, Latin language, and the work and the title of his work was Historia Regum Britannia. Wace wrote in Old French or normal language, and the title of his work was Roman de Brut. And Layman wrote in Old English. which was the language of common people and the title of his work was proved now apart from these three famous poets of anglo norman period there was one more poet whose name is not known now but his work is still popular his work is also popular in modern times because of the research and translations of j r r tolkien now we do not know his name so we term him as the pearl poet or the gawain poet and this name is given because of the poems that he wrote basically there are four poems written by the same writer same poet which are very popular and these poems are sir gawain and the green knight second poem is pearl third poem is patience and the fourth poem is purity all these four poems are written by a single person single poet and we do not know his name so we name him as the pearl poet or the gawain poet Now the first poem Sir Gawain and the Green Knight it is a poem based on chivalric romance now chivalric romances are those stories or poems poems or verses which describes a hero or heroes struggling to prove their bravery and moral character moral strength so this poem Sir Gawain and the Green Knight is based on chivalric romance it discusses the encounter of Sir Gawain and the Green Knight Now this poem Sir Gawain and the Green Knight is an Arthurian poem that is it is a literature which discusses the legend of King Arthur and his knights all such literature which discusses King Arthur and his knights is known as the Arthurian literature or Arthurian poems or Arthurian verses so Sir Gawain and the Green Knight is an Arthurian poem in which we learn about a particular knight of King Arthur whose name was Sir Gawain 
King Arthur had some very brave knights and they used to sit around a round table. Now one day what happens is some, some mysterious man comes to their court and, and he challenges all the knights of King Arthur. What he says is any of the knights of King Arthur can hit him on his neck with his axe and behead him. But the condition is after the beheading of green knight, the same knight who beheads him now will search him and take the strike pack on his neck. Now this is very puzzling because if someone beheads him green knight right now, how can the green, green knight return the strike back after one year? He will die. But every knight of King Arthur knew that that green knight is a magical person. He has miraculous powers. So everyone was fearing him. Nobody was ready to take his challenge. But it was also a matter of ignominy because someone came to King Arthur's court and he challenged all the knights. But none was so brave to take his challenge. So what happens is Sir Gawain stands up and he strikes Green Knight with his, with his axe and he beheads him. But the Green Knight doesn't die. What happens is his, his head falls on the floor and it rolls. But the body doesn't fall. Rather it stands up and he picks up the, the beheaded head. And then he goes out of the court. Now before going out of the court, he says that Sir Gawain must search him after one year to take the strike back. So it is confirmed that after one year, Green Knight will strike Sir Gawain's neck and behead him. That is, he will die. Now, Sir Gawain is a person who knows that after one year, he is going to die. So he remains very worried. He knows that after one year, he will die. Just some days before the completion of one year, he goes out to fulfill his promise, to search Green Knight to fulfill his promise. He keeps his words and goes out to search Green Knight so that he can return the strike back on his neck. Now during his journey he meets a woman who is very beautiful. The name of this woman is Lady Bertilak. Later on it is revealed that Lady Bertilak is the wife of Green Knight. Now this Lady Bertilak checks his moral character and bravery. She tries to seduce him. But Sir Gawain refuses to succumb to the seduction. Then she offers him a ring. She says that it has magical power and it will save him from the path of harm. But Sir Gawain also refuses that ring. Now after some days she reveals that she is the wife of Green Knight and she knows that Sir Gawain is going to search Green Knight so that the Green Knight can kill him, can be had. So she gives him a garden and says that it has magical power and if Sir Gawain takes it then he will be saved from the beheading. Now at this moment Sir Gawain becomes weak and he takes the girdle. It shows his weakness of moral character and it shows his fear of death. The lady buddy like smiles and she goes away. After some time Sir Gawain finds Green Knight and he beheads him. Some literary critics have compared that girdle with the apple that Eve gave to Adam. The second poem of Gawain poet is Pearl. Pearl is a Middle English allegory religious poem. It is a dream vision poem in which an old man is described who is mourning the death of his daughter. The name of his daughter is Pearl who died recently. Now he is mourning him, he is crying and after some time he falls asleep. In his sleep he saws a dream. In that dream he sees his daughter who is wearing very beautiful clothes. She is living in a heavenly city which is very beautiful and she is wearing very very beautiful clothes. She sees his father and she comes to the gate of the city and she tells him that she can take him to the city of heaven. The man loves his daughter so he tries to reach, reach her and to go inside the heavenly city. But what happens is he fails. He wakes up. So the dream shatters. Now after this he reflects on the dream. The third poem of the Pearl Poet is Patience. We do not know much about this poem, but we know that this poem Patience is based on the Vulgate Bible and it discusses the importance of patience. Patience is a didactic, homiletic, alliterative poem. The fourth poem of Pearl Poet is Purity. The other name of this same poem is Cleanness. Purity describes the importance of bodily cleanness and joys of married life. Now three major events of the Bible are discussed in this poem. First is the flood. Second is the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. 
and the third is the fall of bestia in this poem the poet warns about the dangers of defilement and he also discusses the joy joy of cleanliness and married life so so till now we have discussed four main poets of anglo norman period the first was geoffrey manmouth who wrote historica regum britannia the second was wes who wrote roman de prout the third was layman who wrote prout now geoffrey manmouth wrote in latin wes wrote in french and layman wrote in english the fourth poet is the pearl poet or the cavain poet whose actual name we do not know but his four poems poems are very popular and in modern times these poems are popular because of the works of jr r jr r tolkien now apart from these four poets and their works some more poems were very popular during the anglo norman period the first one was shanshan de jeste now shanshan de jeste is a genre of poems one of the very famous poem of this genre was song of roland now all the poems belonging to the shanshan de jeste genre are matter of france and these poems were written to praise the bravery of charlemagne who ruled france during the 8th century many poems of this genre of shanshan de jeste were written during the medieval period and all those poems described and praised the works of charlemagne who was the ruler of france all these poems were written in norman or old french one of the very famous poem of this genre is song of roland in this poem the poet discusses the battle of roncevaux pass which was fought in 778 when charlemagne magne was the ruler of france the second important poem of middle english period is the owl and the nightingale in this poem two birds are debating against each other one bird is the owl and the second bird is the nightingale both birds are arguing on various topics and their aim is to prove who is better now a man overhears this debate this debate between the owl and the nightingale one man overhears him and the poet is describing what he overhears the debate between the owl and the nightingale goes on and on they discuss a lot of subjects but it is not proved who is better now their debate is inconclusive they cannot decide who is better so other birds who are hearing them they suggest them that, that both the owl and the nightingale should go to master nicolas master nicolas nicolas is a person who is very just and he is very popular for his justice so they tell them that both the birds should go to master nicolas of guildford who lives in odisham all this is overheard by a man now the poet is narrating the experience of that man now this poem the owl and the nightingale is one of the earliest examples of debate poetry before this not many poems were written on debate poetry this was one of the earliest or the very first poem of debate poetry other poem of anglo norman period is cursor mundi cursor mundi is a latin phrase which means runners of the world this poem is historical and religious in nature it discusses religion this poem describes the history of world based on the christian bible now the subject is universal history but the main theme of this poem is man's redemption which is based on christian bible this poem cursor mundi has seven parts and it is divided in accordance with the seven stages of salvation that is the seven parts of cursor mundi are based on the mythology christian mythology of seven stages of salvation the fourth important poem of anglo norman period is ancreen riley or ancreen vise both are the names or titles of same poem now ancreen riley or ancreen vise means guide for encrosis it is an anonymous monastic manual written for female encrosis now encrosis are those female who lead a private ascetic prayer oriented life that is Ancrosis are female monks, and this work and Kinnan Riley or and Kinnan Vise is written to guide them. It is a manual for them. Now this poem and Kinnan Vise or and Kinnan Riley has eight parts. The first and the eighth part discusses the outer rule for ancrosis, that is their exterior life, how they behave with others. On the other hand, the second to seventh, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. These parts discusses the interior life of Ancrosis. So this poem and Green Riley or and Green Vise is a didactic, religious, anecdotal, and devotional poem.
Didactic is something which teaches. So today we discussed four main poets of the Anglo-Norman period. First one was Jeffrey Mehmet who wrote Historica Regum Britannia in Latin language. The second one was Pace whose work was Roman D. Root which was written in French. The third poet was Lehman who wrote Root in Old English which was the language of common people. The fourth poet was Cavain poet or the Pearl poet. We do not know his name but his works are still popular. The famous works of Pearl poet are Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, Pearl, Purity and Patience. Apart from these four poets and their works, we have also discussed some other popular poems of the Middle English period. The first one was Song of Roland which belongs to Shanshan de Jeste Yonre. Shanshan de Jeste is that Yonre of poems in which the life and deeds of Charlie Magne were discussed. So Sir Gawain and the Green Knight was an Arthurian poem and this Song of Roland was about Charlie Magne. Arthur was the king of Britain and Charles Magne was the king of France. The other poems that we discussed today are The Owl and the Nightingale, Anne Green Vise and Cursor Mundi. Now Anne Green Vise or Anne Green Riley is a didactic, devotional and anecdotal poem. While the Cursor Mundi is an alliterative poem which discusses the seven stages of salvation. It is based on the man's redemption. So this is all for today. Please like this video, please share it and please subscribe to the discourse. Thanks and regards.